Hey you, do you want a fully functional admin panel which will ban anyone you want in your game? Then stick around and find out how. What's up guys, it's Covert Gold here and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to make a ban system. So the first thing we need to do is make a GUI. So what I'm thinking is you have this box with only appears to the admins and whenever they click on it um, they get this window in which they can ban people okay so the first thing we need to do is design that so let's name this uh, admin panel and get a frame going here um, so let's uh, change this to scale here and drag this to the desired size I'm thinking uh, wait let's yeah let's make the frame first so we don't really need something that large maybe something like this will do change this to like nice darkish colors like yeah that's good remove the border size pixel unless you want that it's up to you um, let's create a gradient here to make it look nice uh, click these three dots here and we want it to go like mm, yeah that's really good actually that's nice so rotated this by 90 degrees and now you've got a nice sort of contrasting uh, grading there so let's make this slightly transparent but not too much that's pretty good um, text label inside of the frame Call this title. Uh, change this to scale again. Yep, and make this one. Actually, my bad. You need to make the other one one. And background transparency to zero. So all we're doing right now is designing. Um, change the text color. Uh, obviously, make this scaled. And change the text color to white. I mean this is up to you guys you can literally just follow along or just differ um, I'm just showing you how I'd like my admin panel to look admin panel uh, let's see here now we need to actually have the the kick thing so we need the button to kick so text button here scale again uh, make it red Yep, uh, change the border size pixel to zero and white text again. Uh, actually, uh, did I say kick earlier? This is a band system. So we're going for something like this. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I, I'd say that looks professional enough. Uh, so button. And now we want the actual um, the box, okay? So like where you type in their name. So now we need a text box right there. So um, um, we're just gonna drag this to the middle here. Make this nice and gray. Yep, slightly transparent again. Uh, make it like so, centered obviously. That looks pretty cool. I like that, yeah. Uh, make this actually like that. Yeah, so now uh, we've got our sort of setup going, okay? So first thing I wanna do before I actually start um, is modify this property here, um, placeholder text. So we want the admins to know how to use this. So this will basically help instruct them on how to use RGUI. So placeholder text will be enter username to ban. Oh, that's a bit too large. So click on the text box and type out uh, UI text constraint. Okay, and limit this to 35 maybe. Yeah, that looks just nice. Yeah, just fine, just fine. Um, make this italic yep there we go so now our admin panels designed looks pretty cool uh, we need to have 
a button so let's just clone this and yep paste it in there call this open and just place it right here so this is going to be called uh, panel and let's make this I mean we could go with something like this and make this transparent to make it match so now that's the panel guys and let's just make this invisible here and now we actually need to make it so like like when you click on the button uh, it will make this uh, visible like so and when you click it again it's going to make it invisible okay so let's make a local script call this controller uh, so local GUI equals script parent so basically this is the GUI because this is its parent uh, local frame equals GUI dot frame so basically this dot frame same thing that I'm gonna do here so local button actually local open equals GUI dot open so GUI dot open so open dot mouse button one down connect function so basically what this means is whenever you click on this button here it's going to run whatever is inside this function so uh, let's have a flag variable here so local open I mean uh, flag equals false so basically currently it's not open that's why it's false so whenever we want it to be open we need to change this to true okay so if flag then so basically this is checking checking if it is equal to true okay um, if it's flag then you want to make it false so flag equals false frame dot visible equals false so basically uh, if it's open then you need to close it and if it's closed you need to open it that's literally what we're doing here else flag equals true frame dot visible equals true so now this should work whenever I click on this button it's supposed to open the admin panel and uh, whenever I click it again it's supposed to close it uh, by the way ignore these these are just plugin errors here I should probably clean that up soon um, so now that we've got that settled we need to make the button here the, the band button actually function so so frame dot button dot mouse button one down connect function so frame dot button okay so this is the button that says ban um, so we can't directly ban them on the client so if you don't know what the client is it's basically um, well we're using a local script so this only affects change on your end so if you ban someone it won't work basically is what I'm trying to say so we need to make it work uh, by using a server script okay so let's go to replicated storage and have a remote event okay uh, ban so basically what the gist is is the client script is going to send a signal to this remote event and this in turn will send a signal to our script here so this is going to be server ban okay so we need to do two things here so the first thing we need to do is whenever someone joins we need to check if they're an admin okay and if they are an admin then um, we need to give them the admin panel so local um, admins is equal to open a table here um, let's pick a, a dictionary which will make it much easier to use uh, covert code okay so this is our first admin is what we're saying if you want to add more admins copy paste and I don't know uh, just enter a, a random name here okay so game not players the player added connect function player so whenever someone joins this is this function is going to run and this is going to be the player that joined okay so player joined uh, if admins to string player then so basically you're checking if the player's name let me just make this easier for you guys player dot name so now you're checking if there's the player's name inside of this table here okay if there is the player's name in the table then 
obviously you're gonna want to give them the admin panel so let's just move this from the starter GUI because if it is in the starter GUI then everyone can access it right even if they're not an admin so we need to drag this inside of the server script and we just need to make a copy for the player who's an admin whenever they join pretty much so uh, local clone equals script admin panel clone so you're just making a copy and then you're going to make this to parent equals player to player so now you're just parenting it to the specific um sorry guys i had to uh, pause the recording there for a bit um so basically if they are an admin okay we are cloning the admin panel gui we just designed and we're going to place it inside of the player gui so the player gui is basically like the starter gui but only for the player okay so now it should give us the um yeah there we go the panel uh, and if I remove myself from the, the admin list, it shouldn't give me the, yeah, it shouldn't give me the panel. So that works. Um, so now we got this done. We need to actually, you know that thing I said about the signal from the remote event there? We need to actually make that work. So bad. on server event connect function um player and victim so basically whenever someone even if that someone is not authorized okay so like if you have an, a, a uh, exploiter or a hacker and they try to fire this i'll make it work so like they can't abuse the system pretty much um so whenever someone fires this remote event by fires i mean sends a signal from their admin panel okay to ban someone, first thing we need to do is check if the player is an admin, okay? So, same thing, we're checking if the player is an admin. If they are an admin, if they are an admin, then they can ban this person. So, victim, uh, kick, you have been banned. Okay. Uh, actually, wait. Because uh, we need to send the data first, so let me just my bad um so game dot replicate storage dot ban fire server uh frame dot text i think frame dot text yeah frame dot text dot text so basically frame dot text dot text okay that's what we're sending it's a bit confusing i know um and here we need to check if this um actual person exists so local found equals game game of players find first child victim okay so if you find the player meaning if they are in your server then you can ban them okay so if found then uh, found kick you have been banned okay so currently let me try this out um, Panel, covert code, ban. And I've been banned, okay? Pretty cool. But if I rejoin, I won't be banned. It's like it's kicked me, okay? So I need this to be permanent, kind of, okay? So the first thing we're going to want to do is um, uh, use data stores. So to use data stores, the first thing we need to do is let me just uh, publish this. Um, go to home, game settings per security and make sure this is enabled here okay it's quite important because if this is not enabled then data stores will not work in Roblox studio they'll only work in your game okay so uh, let's make a new data store here so local band storage equals game dot uh, data store service dot get data store uh, call this band storage version I'll explain what I'm doing it here in a bit local version equals one so basically this is a data store so data store is basically um the thing that allows you to save things on roblox okay so whenever you leave your game it is automatically i mean on most games it is automatically being saved to a data store so when you join back you won't lose your data and the reason i added this version here 
is if you want to easily reset your data, like um, wipe the data or something, you just need to change this number here and you wipe the data, okay? So now we need to do some fancy tricks here. Uh, so local previous data is equal to band storage get async player dot user id so what i did here is i'm checking if the player has any data so if they joined your game for the first time they won't have any data okay so uh and this is the key so you know what you want this to be unique and the user id is the best i think key there is is the simplest and best key i'll just leave it at that so get async is getting the data basically and if this returns nothing then that means they don't have any data so if previous data is equal to nil then they don't have any data which means we need to give them data so ban storage set async user id false so instead of getting the data we're setting the data okay to this uh, make sure you use the same key okay throughout and we're setting this to false so if it's going to be false Okay, so false is equal to not banned, true is equal to banned. So if this is true, then they're banned. If it's false, then they're not banned. And whenever someone joins your game for the first time, uh, I think you want to, like, you don't want to ban them instantly, right? So that's what we just did here. And if they have previous data, okay, then we need to check if they're banned. So if previous data is equal to true, then they are banned. So just uh, player kick, you have been banned. You, actually, you are banned. That'll work. Okay, else, um, if, if it's false, then print player is not banned. Okay, so basically, if they are banned, then you need to kick them from your game, so they won't be able to play. and if they are not banned then this will just print that the player is not banned okay so final step is we need to actually copy this uh come on here uh copy and paste this down here actually before before that okay there we go so basically this is setting it to true and remember how i said that true is equal to banned whenever a uh, an admin decides to ban someone we need to make sure it saves Okay, so uh, we're just saving the data here. And so whenever someone joins back, we can check if they're banned or not. So now if I click play, hopefully everything will run smoothly. Uh, I've been banned. Oh, I need to reset the, wait, uh, you are banned. That shouldn't make sense. Well, not shouldn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. There is a bit of a logical flaw here. Uh, if it's equal to nil, then ban storage set async. Else, uh, let me try and reset this. I mean, I don't think it's because of that. Yeah, no, there's like a logical error here. Let me just get back to you guys. Let me solve this real quick. Oh, my bad, guys. So I was actually recording this a while back, and it seems that the version I'm using already has data assigned to it so what i'm going to do is change this to version 25 okay and now let's click play it shouldn't ban me yeah so now if say if i wanted to ban myself for some reason we're going to ban covert code ban and now i've been banned i'm gonna stop the game i'm gonna attempt to join back and it should say i'm banned so yeah uh that's how you uh, make a ban system uh, make sure to like the video I appreciate your guys' support and yeah I'll see you guys in the next one